fantasy booking the Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville storyline in WWE right now here on SCW. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. Please subscribe right now. Leave any comments in the comment section. Please like and share the video as well. Now, of course, back earlier this year, to many people's surprise, Sonya Deville returned to WWE on SmackDown as an authority style figure. She was going to be the assistant to Adam Pearce on SmackDown, uh, which was clearly interesting at times. A lot of people want to see a return in ring and go for the Women's Championship. But at the same time, we can see that this gives Sonya Deville some importance on TV as an authority style figure and guaranteed TV time each and every week, which is quite fun to see. And have we seen this story unravel a little bit over recent weeks and months? And I felt when Shane McMahon came in, we could see a bit of undermining of Adam Pearce's authority because Adam Pearce has been an official and not a GM, mind you, on Raw and SmackDown over recent months. We've seen that character playing in. Sonya Deville has remained solely on SmackDown only until this week, but we'll come to that when we get there. With Shane McMahon starting to undermine, I've noticed Sonya Deville doing the same as well, and it's kind of heightened up in recent weeks, particularly with Roman Reigns. So of course, Roman Reigns had issues with Adam Pearce in January this year. There was actually one point where Adam Pearce was getting the championship match against Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble, if you do remember quite clearly, before Kevin Owens was brought back to actually take his spot instead for the last man standing match that they were to go on and have. But Adam Pearce still though, has made decisions and a lot of the time he's got to go through the Tribal Chief. Sonya Deville seems to be pro side of Roman Reigns and not on what Adam Pearce wants to do for the baby faces, almost the right decisions for the company right now. And we've seen it this week now on Raw when she's made her first appearance this time. Adam Pearce and WWE you know, they suspended Charlotte Flair last week for an attacking official, a referee. She had to pay a fine. And, of course, she was brought back by Sonya Deville this week. She thought the decision was made very hastily by Adam Pearce and WWE officials that uh, she paid her fine. As long as she made an apology, she was free to come back to the roster, which, of course, Adam Pearce didn't take too kindly about. He actually thought he was very undermined. And it was quite clear for the first time on camera that he was acknowledging that someone was taking advantage of disagreeing with him and going against the decisions he has made. So where is this going to go from? From here and I think that's where we get to play into the storytelling because this can go further on to the point where we can see hopefully a bit of a breakup between these two I want to see friction to the point that we see stakes on the line because what I think WWE shows miss in general right now is general managers I think we need to have it officially not just the WWE official not just someone that's backstage and says I'll see if I can make a match for you Adam Pearce has been fine at making matches some weeks unless it's Cesaro for a championship match but let's see what we can do Sonya Deville has also shown she's quite good at the role the Street Profits trying to get championship matches off of her and she's not been so quick to give in she's shown she's got the authority and she arguably knows how to use it just more of a heel kind of fashion and I like that dynamic you have the face and you have the heel gems because that's beautiful for a storyline. We can get to the point that Sonya Deville undermines Adam Pearce so much that she wants to be the general manager of either one show or both shows. And we can sort of play it off, if you want, into some sort of match where we have superstars representing maybe them. And then that way we can see if one of them manages to win over the other one. And I think Sonya Deville, should, she should win. In my opinion, I think more than likely Sonya Deville would be on SmackDown. I think Adam Pearce would be on Raw. But if it was my choice, I'd have it the other way around because I think Raw being a three hour show is better off having a heel GM because you've got more you can do with a heel general manager. The babyface one seems to make the decisions against the heel champion. Stuff goes against the babyface when it's the, obviously the heel GM and it sort of creates more intriguing and better storylines to go forth. And I think that suits a longer show better than having a face run. I think when you look for the history as well of GMs on Raw and SmackDown, to go through Teddy Long era, for example. Teddy Long was always on SmackDown, the babyface. You've seen people like Joran Laurinaitis, you've seen like Eric Bischoff, those sort of people, the heel ones on Raw. So for me, that's the dynamic. I like it to play out. But as I say, in 2021, I think Pierce goes to Raw. I think Deville is on SmackDown because she is a SmackDown person and uh, I think that's where she would stay. But this is where we can start having some fun with this because yes, okay, we've had the WWE draft every year, but does it really make sense that officials and TV shows are fighting over it? They should have actual GMs that are doing GM things. And we can actually start getting a warfare in WWE rather than just Survivor Series having Raw and SmackDown against each other. Why not having that sort of invasion kind of feeling 
the whole year through. Why not do something that's fun and exciting? Contracts up for one show, we get them to defect to the other show rather than waiting for a draft. Maybe there's a mole in one show looking to just you know turn on their own GM to go to the other show. I think that would be so much fun to watch on weekly TV. It's something that would be completely different. And plus, from an actual storytelling perspective, if there are superstars you have in WWE and you don't know what to do with them, you can say, well, do you know what? They've been on this show for a while. Why wait till the draft where they're going to be stuck in catering for the next nine months? Let's get them over to the other show and we've got a plan for them where we can make more use of them on, say, SmackDown right now rather than being on Raw. Someone like Ricochet would benefit right now from that move over. Maybe someone on SmackDown could benefit from that move on Raw. Maybe the tech divisions get stale, the women's divisions. It could all be tightened up and it could be done nicely and effectively when necessary and then perhaps you have that one spell of the year rather than like having the draft you can have where it's a trade season i used to remember that when it was back in like 2005 you'd see one week on raw one superstar turn up the next week on smackdown another superstar turn up or you go for the classic raw versus smackdown matches and the winner gets a draft pick the classic format that you get there and either the gm can go out and make that call or maybe it's done with the funny randomizer that we used to get up on the screen each and every time but still this could be much better the way it could play out and this is why it's pivotal that we could have gms on the show and why these two could be the catalyst of making actually a better storytelling and better shows for both raw and smackdown going forward now smackdown is doing good stuff but raw needs all the help it can get right now and if it's going to get that help why not with a storyline like this with a gm brought back in you have your natural storylines that are going on your show but at the same time you have this platform where you don't know what's going to happen next kind of like the monday night wars you never knew with raw and nitro when they were head to head what was happening yes it's slightly different with raw and smackdown on different nights but you can still have the same magic where a superstar defects from one show to the other it almost feels like we're playing gm mode here with wwe but certainly i think that could work so so well but this is your turn now to let me know in the comments do you like this idea do you think this would be a good direction for the storytelling for the storyline i think someone like roman reigns is pivotal to this charlotte flair as well maybe it's like a best out of three match someone who's got two people representing her already and then pierce can find people that could represent him as well depending on what show they're looking to fight for it could be interesting tv it certainly be more exciting than some of the stuff we're getting right now and like i say particularly on Raw. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below anyway. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and keep an eye out for more videos that will be dropping on the channel as and when I can. I've got another one coming with money in the bank implications coming on the channel so make sure to keep an eye here on SCW. But that's all for me. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a great day. You've been watching SCW here on YouTube.